development talk, this one by Mike Conway and Cesar Gard on IROD's web interface development. Hey, good morning, everybody. I'll let C uh, Cesar mic up here um, while I introduce things. So <clears throat> I don't know if you guys remember Garching. We had a lot of fun there, and that was the time where we were transitioning to the consortium taking over. And I, at that time, I think there was lots of discussion about what would happen with IRODs. And, um, and I think that you all can see that, as was stated there in Garching, IRODs is moving forward rather quickly. And um, so I work with uh, the DICE group and I work with the DataNet Federation. Um, and I know that things can be really confusing, but you know, just sort of know that you know, we're all collaborators, and so we work on a lot of different stuff together. So, Hello, hello. Uh, yeah, so what we're trying to do is um, the technology that's being developed under, under DataNet, where we're building cyber infrastructure on top of the IROD's middleware. Um, there's lots of stuff that's happening within DFC that we want to put out to the community the way DICE all, always has, and so this is an example of, of that. Um, so we're really interested in web interfaces. So I'm responsible for iDrop Web 2, and I'm sorry to say that, <laughs> but this was something we didn't have any web interfaces, so we wanted to push something out and have it, and like most prototypes, it goes into production before you know it. So. Um, so we want to get off of that as quickly as possible, and instead of having interfaces developed by software developers, have interfaces that are developed by interface designers and graphic developers, and that's what Cesar is. So, um, so DFC has engaged with uh, Cesar to assist us in this, so I'm doing the back end of the uh, interface, and Cesar is doing the front end development, and I think we've been really productive really fast, and so this is meant to give researchers a sort of a Dropbox-like experience when they're using the data net infrastructure. Um, there is also a companion to this, which is iPlant's discovery environment, which I hope, we're, you know, we'll show some screenshots of this, but iPlant has done just amazing work, and I think they're ahead of everybody in terms of how they've taken all the elements of cyber infrastructure and put it into a workbench for researchers. So think of the discovery environment as being that work, workbench for computation and analysis and, and sort of the entire scientific workflow and what we're looking at here now are things for groups like the TDLC, the Temporal Dynamics Learning Center, which is a DFC partner, who has researchers that would be completely overwhelmed by complexity and they just want to move data around and share it. And that's what we're focusing on with these interfaces. So with that, I'm gonna, now that Cesar, I think, is ready, I'm going to turn it over to him. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to be presenting and uh, showing you guys a first look to the web interface that we've been working on. Uh, my name is Cesar. I started working with the group uh, about almost three months ago and uh, has been my pleasure to be part of this team and work, working with Mike to actually make this happen. So without further ado, this is basically uh, an effort between the DFC group and IROTS to create some sort of like a All right, hold on, I need to readjust. And for the devs out there, while Cesar's getting that hooked up, the interface is built on top of the Jargon library. Um, it, it is compatible with 4.1. We're going to do a Jargon release uh, this week that's compatible with the new IRODs. Um, and so it's backward compatible to 3.3.1. Um, it's built using Groovy and Grails on the back end, so it's just a lightweight REST API on the back end on top of Jargon. The front end is AngularJS and mostly Bootstrap and some jQuery. So it should be pretty accessible. It's using pretty standard yes. uh, um, mainstream technology now. The, yeah. No, that's all right. Um, the, if you want just to stay here, just in case they ask something of the, the back end, I mean, like, I don't know. Uh, uh, so, as Mike said, uh, we're trying to implement and, and give this basically uh, the latest and greatest uh, best practices. And uh, basically, is uh, I'm using Bootstrap as a CSS framework. So this site is uh, mobile responsive. It will work on your desktop. It will work on laptops. And it hasn't been optimized yet, but it will work on your phones as well. Um, yet to be discussions to be had. This is just uh, for 
showing purposes is uh, the, the first version is not complete yet, so there might be some bugs around, so just uh, cut me some slack. We are still working on it. All right, so we're going to log in. This is uh, basically the interface is going to authenticate with an IROTS resource, an ICAT, if you want. So this should be this one. All right, it should be. There we go. All right, so this is um, the interface. This is what I call the hierarchical browsing. There's going to be, in the future, multiple ways for you to be able to browse, or how do you want to browse your data. This right now is the, the one that makes the most logic to uh, present first, which is the hierarchical, um, I guess, like a folder structure or a collection structure that you could drill down and start like seeing and what is the content of a collection and there might be sub collections inside and you can keep on drilling down and you have breadcrumbs on the top. I have been focusing in making uh, the design of the interface very simple. It's uh, supposed to be about the data, not about like, uh, I don't think it should be like too fancy or get you distracted with icons or stuff like that. It's all about like surfing and actually discovering your data. Um, I've been working on trying to make it, uh, make it easy to use. Um, no offense to my wonderful team, but uh, for myself, it was quite a task to just even install iRots on a machine. Uh, and uh, I think if you have something like a clicky click interface, it's going to make it so much easier for you to actually interact with the system. And uh, all right. Uh, I'm going to start showing some of the features that uh, we are going to release on the version one. You can create a collection. I'm going to call this. Yeah. So we can see that uh, I just created a collection that I call Cesar Rocks. And we can actually go in we can rename a collection. We can select, well, it could be either a collection or it could be a, or, uh, a file, and we can actually rename it. I don't like the name. Hmm. Let's rename this too. The real one is Mike. So now we can see that the change of uh, the name of uh, the collection just changed. Um, I incorporated uh, some uh, jQuery um, UI features that were uh, basically I'm just leveraging some of the pre-built uh, libraries for all the front end. I have a single select or multiple select. As you can see here uh, in the here below the breadcrumbs, you can see what is the file that I have, have oh, sorry, that I have selected, and it will let me know basically how many files I'm dealing with. There are some of the features that will only be available for, uh, to do on a single select, such as the rename, but if you're doing multiple selects, then some of the features change dynamically based on your selection. Uh, so I get that. Okay, uh, you could do um, either a single download of uh, a photograph or whatever file you have on your collection. All right. So I just downloaded this photograph. I took it here. Yeah, I'm glad that it was not some of the other ones that I have uploaded. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted uh, to, this one is good. <laughs> I, I wanted to mention too we're being really observant of performance. So we so for example, you might have seen some of the traffic on IROT's chat about some of the new buffering approaches we've used for streaming IO and we're seeing big improvements. So you should see also big improvements with the streaming IO 
when we put these new algorithms into the the web interface as well too. So nice. We're mindful of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I have um, we have developed a single download. You can also do a multiple select of files and generate a download. Now what is happening here is that actually the system is creating a temporary collection, putting all the files that you have selected inside that collection, zipping the collection, downloading the collection to your computer, and then getting rid of all the information so uh, you don't basically keep all that trash on your system. Uh, I have just downloaded this zip, and basically you can see all the, the pictures that I have uploaded or I just downloaded from the collection. All right, multiple download. Okay, I can delete files. I could do like a single delete. Uh, I, yes, I, I try to make this um, um, kind of like a, the more messages the better because basically you, you have the features of an admin when you are moving your data inside your collections. Uh, so I try to put as many stops or alerts as possible, and this is something that can be uh, basically ratchable, right, if you don't want so many uh, warnings. But you are moving data and messing with the stuff, right, uh, that you have a lot of power on the, on the user interface. So there's a lot of like, hey, are you sure? Yes. You just click yes. Are you sure that you click yes? Are you, okay. So... There's a lot of like, please confirm, confirm, confirm. I can do multiple uh, select on different files. It doesn't have to be basically consequent. I can do multiple deletes. Again, are you sure that you want to do this? Yes, I'm sure. Deletion complete. Yes. All right. Working so far. So um, we have also developed, these are just basically uh, kind of like a general overview of some of the actions that you can do on one, or one single item or multiple items. And you have just brief information about what this data object is all about. So we also created something that is kind of like the profile where you can actually drill down and see more information about whatever your data object is. So this carries a little bit more of uh, a little bit more information about who the owner is, uh, when it was last modified, and uh, again, some of the um, information that is being shown here is available on the system. It was uh, basically we just decided what could possibly be the arguably the, the most relevant information to show on the uh, profile of a data object, but again, this is something that can change based on the needs of whoever the, the, the client or whoever is using this interface. It could be, it is customizable. We have uh, here basically all the metadata that uh, is associated with this data object. We're gonna make available uh, the, basically the feature for you to add metadata, edit the metadata. And uh, we have also a tab that is actions that you can take on this data object. There are system, basic system actions, such as like move, delete, upload, download, rename, and stuff like that that I'm gonna make also available here on the system actions, right? Hold on, I'm gonna make a quick stop. And I'm gonna show you kinda like, this is a screenshot of uh, basically my design interface of what I was planning for the future, and then you can see here basically all the things that I'm planning to incorporate for this version one. There are system actions and there's also something that we uh, are going to call or again this is uh, on development and uh, the, the syntax or how we're naming things can, can change at any moment. Uh, but there's going to be also actions that are associated with the, uh, the mind type of the data object. Just for example if this is uh, a text data object you can probably have a WYSIWYG application where you could edit the text file 
or you could convert it to a PDF, there are some certain actions that are only apply to the certain type of data object. Uh, if it was a picture, you want to transform this picture from a J JPEG into a PNG, or you want to turn it into a PDF, or want to do a thumbnail, or stuff like that. Yeah. If, I, if I can jump in, this idea here is actually inspired by some of the work that iPlant did in their discovery environment. So what we're talking about doing is making the interface extensible in different ways by putting policies into the grid. So what we're proposing here for these file type actions is that you can add applications with metadata about what those applications relate to. So it could be as simple as putting IROD's rules on the grid and annotating them. This rule is appropriate for uh, images or this MIME type or for data objects. And the idea is when you go into this page and you view a data object, the applications and capabilities you put on your grid and configure will appear here in the interface. So if you're doing gene data, you might have certain sort of gene manipulation apps or subsetting apps. And the idea is the it's about a lot of this interface is about plug pluggability where you can generate user interface components based on metadata and have interactions with the user. So again, that means you can extend the interface with your own applications and tools without having to touch the web code. And that's sort of where we're going with that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so once again, based on some of the, this, this could be, uh, as much as this could be a data object, such as like a picture or a PDF or whatever it is, it could be also a workflow that is associated with uh, certain actions that you have built on your system. And we could put the triggers on the file type actions so that you could run certain workflows on certain files from the interface as well. Um, we are planning also to, uh, as, as much as we have here, the, the metadata tab. Hold on, I'm going to go back to the web. All right. Uh, you're going to be able to edit the metadata and all this stuff. And basically, we are also going to add uh, a feature for you to mess around with the ACLs, the ACLs, for permissions on certain files and certain collections so that you can restrict who is able or capable of editing certain data objects or certain collections. You don't want people just going around and deleting all your stuff because they can. Um, also, um, we have created the capability of an upload. There are resources, all right. So, as I said before, this is a responsive application, so it works on the phone. I am right now connected to the IROTS through the VPN of the DSC from my phone, and I will, okay, I will show you actually the upload here on the interface because you can't see the phone, but uh, I can upload basically things into the collection. I can either browse the files that are on my computer or I could just simply drag and drop them. And they get just like basically discovered by the, 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 the user interface. And it tells you like it could be either a single or multiple files. As we see, this is web interface actions. And now we have it here. Now, I, now that you see how the upload works, I'm, I'm going to do an exercise here. And I'm going to use my phone to upload a picture from my phone. So if you allow me just one second, I'm going to take a selfie. OK. Let's see. OK, here it is. All right. So we can see the picture. It, of course, has um, a, a, a name generated by the phone. So just for the sake of the example, uh, the phone, uh, the name of the picture ends on 472. As you can see, there's no pictures here with that name. And I'm just going to refresh this. And here it is. So I'm going to select this picture. I'm going to download it. And I'm going to show it to you. 
There we go. All right. Questions? <laughs> uh, well, actually, Mike has something more to say, but like. Can you, yeah, can you pull back up the interface and get rid of that picture, please? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah. All right. Go All back right. to the browsing. All right. So we're going to have a. <clears throat> Right. So we're early on, right, what we're trying to do now is establish sort of the UI style is really what Cesar's talking about. There's lots more features to do, but we would really like to get community feedback yes. early on and users, and we're trying to figure out a mechanism within DFC so that we can start having user studies and all the things that groups like iPlant do that we want to try to emulate. I'm going to show basically what it is. Yeah, go back to the... But, so, but there are features embedded in this interface that are that we'll talk about in the, in the talk, but like for example, this uh, idea of these saved searches, you notice we have like a root directory and a home directory, and we've also added um, one here called starred files, and that's sort of a, an indication of where we're going with something we call virtual collections. So as we talk about indexing, we're also talking about bringing back even external or internal metadata searches and putting them on an equal footing with the IROTS hierarchy. So, for example, we've demonstrated with Hive within DFC that you can annotate um, d collections and data objects with uh, RDF, SCOS vocabulary terms, index them and put them in a Jenna triple store, create a virtual collection that runs a Sparkle query. And so you can, set, you can have a collection that appears to be an IRODS folder that is actually a Sparkle query of give me everything related to birds or, or um, um, children of birds or siblings of birds, and also maybe rice, if we're using Agrivoc or something like that. And you can actually create a new IRODS collection that can span even multiple zones and represent it on an equal footing with the IRODS hierarchy. So as we talk about indexing, we also want to bring the product of that indexing back in to this view. So you can create new collections. So give me a collection that is based on group ownership of files. So everything owned by a group could be in IROD's folder. Yeah. And we're talking with Jason about putting that also into the core server. Yeah, this, this ties up also on the different um, basically ways for you to be able to browse your data. Uh, so far we have only created the hierarchical one, but uh, uh, we're planning to do uh, a focused search, so you could actually either search the namespace of your data objects or collections or the metadata. There's going to be filters, basically. Uh, what do you want to search? And basically, that is going to return uh, a listing that is going to be sim similar to this, and you uh, are going to be able to save that search, creating a, a safe search, as you see here, right? And it's going to be dynamic. If the search was something about uh, things that are associated with certain project, let's say the, the Amazon project, right? Um, and I save that search, and it just so happens that uh, I check it today, and it has 10 pictures inside, right? I could uh, go the next day and check it again, and there has been some activity on it, and then instead of having the 10 pictures on it, it has 25, because it's, a, it's dynamic, basically. It's just a safe search, and it's, every time you want to access it, it's just redoing the query and regathering everything that is associated with that basically query, right? Yeah. Can you can you pop open like a data object homepage? Yeah. So these are sparse right now too. There's a lot more to put in here. So again, we're stealing a lot from iPlant um, in the sense of being able to do for text files to add document editors right in place. Um, and also if you click open the metadata there. Yeah. So this, we'll talk about this in the DFC talk, but in the context of this, we want to get away from just showing bags of AVUs. They don't mean anything. So there's an effort within DFC called metadata templates that allow you to add structure to metadata and annotate it with type information, validation information, and so forth. So instead of seeing just a bag of AVUs, what, what you'll see will be a nicely formatted display of um, your metadata grouped together with titles and mouse overs and um, the ability also to edit, for example, Dublin Core and get a user interface form to enter that Dublin Core metadata as opposed to trying to, to do bags of ABUs. So that's also um, in development. We'll talk about that some this afternoon. So we're not just going to th throw out bags of ABUs at you. Um, we're going to give you the ability to add your own metadata templates and validation criteria and things. Yeah. You're looking for feedback. 
Yeah. If you're looking for feedback on this, is there a live site that people can look at? Um, we will put one up on the DFC main grid. Probably It's probably going to be next week. Okay. What we're looking at here is, is the DFC test grid. It's behind the firewall now, but yes. So I think we're actually at a point. <clears throat> yeah, that we, where we can make it available. It's, it's, it's put together enough that we could start gathering some feedback. So we could make it, uh, yes, definitely available, and we want to get some feedback. So with Regan's permission, if he says yes, we'll put it up on the DFC main grid and announce it. But yes, we would like some user feedback. So, so one of he just said yes. One of the great features of, of, um, of iDrop used to be you could, if you were uploading something gigantic, you could close the cover of your computer and go somewhere else and start it again. That's the desktop client? This is a different animal. So, um, that, so that remains, I mean, we're wondering what to do with the desktop client. Um, That's really useful because you can have like a gigabyte power. Uh, right. I think that we will continue that. We're also going to see a QT interface later today. So, um, yes, I think that it's really up to the, um, the consortium I would like to see some of that stuff start transitioning to the consortium because, frankly, it, it's, it's things start. You start trying to do too many things, and things start getting sort of right. a little fluffier as you get out towards the edges. So I'm trying to figure out how to start consolidating and focusing, and so we would need the consortium's help on some of that. Yeah, yeah. Hi. First of all, guys, I think you did a pretty good job with the web interface and all the backend part as well. My question is. Um, I saw your uh, multiple files download feature. I'd like to know if you're kind of using some um, IROTS comments like physical bundle on the IROTS side, or you are I getting every file from IROTS into our web server? We're using the IROTS uh, physical bundle, so we can do gzip, tar, <coughs> depending on what's on the IROTS server. What we do, is, though, is we create a temporary collection and consolidate those files for the zipping. So there's some extra cruft around you know, creating the thing to then bundle up and then do cleanup later. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, my question would be, um, you said it would also be possible to customize the, um, like, um, the user interface or also uh, what is possible there or maybe disable some actions, things like that. So can you shortly explain uh, how that would work? How that would work? Well, we are still, like, yeah, the, we, yeah. we just want to get the bare bones out there, right? A, a very thin, uh, very, uh, I guess, uh, solid client for, for you to be able to browse and do basic actions, right? Eventually, uh, we are going to create an admin uh, tab on the far left side. And if you have, and basically, if you are an admin of the grid, you're going to be able to see, right now, I have just the dashboard and the hierarchical browsing, right? If you were an admin of the grid, you will have then basically your administrative tab right here, and then you can basically start deciding, hey, I don't like this color, I want to change uh, the logo here on the top, or what I want to display, uh, I, I just want uh, the grid to be just two columns, three columns, how do you want to display your data, what data do you want to display on, on basically on the listing, what is the thing that makes the most sense for you to see, rather than the timestamp, right? I want to know who the owner is and when was the last time it was changed or something like that. So uh, we are going to start incorporating some of those features, but it is a future endeavor rather than uh, for this first iteration that we just want basically to get this out so that this is going to make it easy for the basically the regular users to be able to see and serve IROTs without having to know basically the, the a, a terminal box and having to, to use the Unix interface. Yeah, that, that's great. Yeah, I mean, maybe the admin uh, could also use a, just a config file to customize the thing or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, great, thanks. Yeah. I have another question about the enterprise environment. How is the data flow? between when you up and download data, do we go directly from the resource server to the client or will everything proxies? It, it flows through the, the mid-tier, so we're running on Tomcat. So when you upload, for example, it's a, it's a, a HTTP um, multi-part upload, so you get the binary stream attached to the HTTP upload. And so 
that's basically an, an input stream in, in the mid-tier that is then just piped through to IRODs through over port 1247. So since it's going through jargon, you're just going, you're going from the, uh, um, from the browser through Tomcat, it gives you an input stream to that multi-part file, and it's just pushed into IRODs through IO streaming, if that helps. So you can SSL encrypt it and so forth. Yes. Uh oh, this is going to yeah. be trouble. <laughs> we're we're not taking any more questions. No, um, how about uh, data sharing with someone who doesn't have an iRoads account? Right. So <clears throat> it's not in here yet, but we will be supporting tickets. Um, one of the nice things is, unlike Audrop Web 2, the back button is not horribly broken, and it's also capable of deep linking. So you can create a URL directly to the data object. And so as we move forward with this, what will happen is you can just attach the ticket as a parameter to that URL, and it will take you right to that page is what we're talking about. But so, yes. yeah, it's being considered, but not for um, the, the very first iteration, just because there's so many complications also with uh, basically the, the type of sharing that you could be doing. It could be sharing within the network, it could be sharing with like, do, do you want to give public access? Do you want to limit, like give a time frame for, for that basically access or uh, just actually rather put a count, how many times that can be downloaded or hit. So there's, there's a, a couple of things that we want to incorporate and it's just a little bit robust uh, for version one. Uh, I've been here only three months, but make it an effort. Uh, hi. Um, I saw that you put in some drag and, dot, drag and drop type uh, facility for the upload. I was yeah. wondering, um, do you have plans to develop that further, or, or maybe it actually is, and I just haven't seen that, but um, integrating facilities like being able to drag and drop directly onto the folder from your desktop rather than going through the intermediate of clicking upload first or dragging directly from uh, items listed in the browser onto your desktop or moving things about within uh, directories inside well, we, the browser? Well, uh, the question is if, if I'm going to actually amplify the capabilities of drag and drop right into the, the entire interface rather than having to be on the upload, uh, basically, a screen, just because of how, how easily this could get complicated, right, and dropping files Right, especially with drag and drop. Uh, right now, I have a pad right here, right. So I have to click, and then, when, like with my other finger, I have to go and drag. And I might drop this in a folder that I'm not, like, basically wanting this to happen. So I want to be very specific, right, that you are actually uploading content to certain collections. So you must be there for you to be able to upload. Again, this is something that. We might actually be flexible enough that we, we will give you the feature for you to choose. Do you want drag and drop everywhere or just in the in the page? But for now, we want to make it again just as as basic and solid, right? So that there's the less mistakes, the better, right? You, we, we try to basically narrow down what the actions are and what, where you are taking these actions, so that the, the the user error basically gets like restricted. And there's less of that. Yeah, one, one thing is uh, this is going to get really complicated really fast as we start decorating it with more features. And so one of the problems we had with iDrop Web 2, which was based on the tree, is sometimes people were not aware of where they were applying their actions. So it was developed for a lifetime library. So we had students like, whoops, I just deleted my entire home directory because they didn't know where they were. So we we're really trying to channelize to think of those users. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Time for speakers. All right. Thank you.